What is up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode, and this is Weekly Ramble, a show where we go and take all the views from the gaming world, anything from the footballing world and FIFA, and we put it together in a sort of 15 to 18 minute podcast, um, but it's a solo podcast, and hopefully you do enjoy these. I do get decent feedback from you guys on the likes and things like that, so it's much appreciated, and I do apologize. I did miss last week's. I was very busy on the day. The issue is Team of the Week gets announced at 3 o'clock uh, UK time, and the issue is I was very busy that day, so I couldn't, you know, see the team of the week and do a video in between three to six uh, to get it out before team of the week is out in pack. So I really am sorry about that. So let's get into the main topic today, which is the team of the week, which is out later today or it's out today uh, on Wednesday. And this is for March 20th. So this is the team of the week. I'm going to breeze through most of them and talk about a couple um, in the team. It is David Villa uh, and Barek Yilmaz. Then we've got Eden Hazard, Ryan Donk, Marquisi, I think that's his second in form, Nuri Sahin, uh, Ezekiel Garay, Colotto, Rio Ferdinand, Seamus Coleman, and Courtois. And on the bench, there's a couple of interesting players as well. I do want to talk about a couple of players. For example, Barak Yilmaz looks a really good player. 82 pace, 82 shooting, 80 passing, 82 dribbling, 82 in the air. I have not traded his up. Uh, always upgraded card. Uh, I did hear really good things about it, so I, I would expect this inform to be pretty good. We've also got Eden Hazard, uh, who looks just incredible. I've not used again. I've not used his normal. I do believe this is his first inform. I might be wrong. It could be his second, and uh, he's definitely going to be a worth a lot of money. Definitely someone you probably will look out for if you do buy packs. Also, someone who's interesting is Ryan Donk. Ryan Donk is a silver, um, plays for Club Rouge, and uh, he's usually a centre-back. So what they've done is he's played a lot at CDM. I remember when he played Newcastle in the Europa League, he was playing CDM. So um, he, this is his position now, obviously, in the centre defensive midfielder. He's got 80 pace, 75 passing, 72 dribbling, 75 defending, 83 in the air. The only stat that really lets him down is his shooting is 50. I mean, that's like bronze level shooting. I mean, he was a defender, so they, they've upped it a little, but that's still going to be pretty poor. So he can be a good defensive midfielder, apart from he's not going to have long shots. He would be very interesting probably quite expensive it all depends silvers there's all uh, there's never tons of them about so probably someone who will rise then we have second in form marquisio he looks a very solid center mid i did try the first in form and didn't enjoy him that much but uh you know if you enjoy him you know it's a second in form and he's got you know ridiculous stats nuri sahin at now at um dortmund 83 cdm he looks good apart from the pace that's always going to let him down uh it's the issue that you're going to get with some of these players like javi martinez and javi garcia where they just don't feel that great at center mid uh, cdm for me uh just because of that pace, people can just bomb past them. They're a great defensive player, and they can spread the ball, especially Sahin with 86 passing, but yeah, I, I don't think he'd be used that much, but um, he could be someone good to pick up. Then we have Azequiel Garay, centre-back from Benfica. Again, really solid stats. I mean, he's got 67 pace, which is a lot of people going to look at, but he is really, really good, his normal card, so I expect this inform to be really nice. Definitely someone I want to pick up. Colotto, 58 pace. Then we have Ferdinand, 60 pace. These are the centre-backs You know, people are not going to use. Seamus Coleman looks good for a BPL uh, silver team. Courtois has some nice stats, but I didn't really enjoy his... Uh, normal card and on the bench there's a couple of silvers and one bronze nothing really special but what i do want to talk about is the two goals on the bench there is jay rodriguez from southampton he's at a cam position i think he was usually a striker uh 81 pace 74 shooting 75 dribbling 77 heading he looks pretty solid for a 77 overall and he probably will be quite cheap someone to look out for the most impressive player i think uh you know on that bench anyway is uh Alejandro Gomez and he's a player that plays for Catania the Argentinian he's usually a winger he's converted to striker you know what's happened to Palacio uh, pretty much the same thing with Gomez he is a striker 87 pace 87 dribbling 79 shooting as well 75 passing he looks a really good player and what you can do with him is convert him down to cam and he'll be a great cam or even a center mid depending on what formation so he's going to be worth quite a bit the most impressive player, I think, um, there for a cheaper standard compared to, you know, Hazard and uh, second and four Marquis here, which are going to be ridiculous money. I don't think he's going to be that expensive, but he is still going to be like, um, you know, quite expensive and someone to look out for. So that is the team of the week. It's pretty decent. Uh, nothing special. If you're going to buy packs, you're obviously going to be looking for the Hazard, but maybe do try your hand at a silver pack to maybe uh, get a chance of getting Ryan Donk because I do think he's going to be worth quite a bit of money.
Okay, so let's get into the rest of the topics. And um, I've already said the investment diary. You can check it in the description below with the links to Team of the Week and things like that. I would say invest in maybe Donk just because he's usually a centre uh, centre back, so it's a converted position, and they usually do go up in prices. Also, as well, silver there's going to be less on the market, so it all depends on what his initial price is. If it isn't stupid, he probably is going to rise. Uh, you know, when he's out of packs, Hazard. Is definitely going to be uh, rising unless there's another inform of him um after this week's team of the week people are always going to want to try him out especially being in the bpl definitely uh, he's going to rise after that aleandro gomez converted is definitely someone you're going to have to look for uh, there's going to be a lot of people wanting that say cam at 352 so you could be clever converting him striker to cam you might get some money from that way but it's definitely someone to look out for anyway um and maybe invest in and gripe you know, I have a feeling about him. Not many uh, defenders are that great in the Liga Portuguesa, um, or get Portuguesa, however you want to say it. And uh, he's a really solid player, so I expect him to rise because of that uh, and the league he's in. He's in a really nice league as well. You know, with Rodrigo Martinez, etc. Anyway. So let's get off the FIFA topic and let's get into the real world football. And to be honest, I really can't escape much, especially being a Newcastle fan, of how screwed over Newcastle have been uh, recently. Uh, you know, uh, we must have done something wrong with the. Uh, we got incredibly, incredibly unlucky. Um, we lost to Wigan 2 1. I don't think we deserve to lose. Uh, their, their goal in stoppage time was handball. Uh, also, you know, the obviously the tackle that happened, I think in the 15th minute, I could be wrong, it was very early in the game. We already had an injury before then where uh, Debuchet had to go off with a hamstring. He's out for four weeks. So, yeah, things are not going well for Newcastle. And uh, the topic is going to talk about that tackle and uh, another uh, sub. Uh, common um, also on refereeing so let's go and talk about the top uh, the tackle if you don't know what the tackle is um, it's basically in that Newcastle Wigan game uh, one of the players for Wigan a Callum McManaman uh, went very dangerous and reckless over the ball and uh, basically studded him above the knee and he had to get stretched off and it looks really bad i mean it took over a couple of days for it to even straighten out to be able to scan uh, that's the sort of damage this guy was doing and it could potentially be a career ending injury he's only 19 as well because it happened to um masaido haidara who we've only just bought in ourselves and he's only 19 and uh it's a really reckless challenge and um the the, the end of the day is my view is going to be tainted because um i'm a newcastle fan I can see it from their perspective. Oh, I say their Callum's perspective. He's getting a lot of, I would say, you know, unwanted press um, about that tackle and um, and what happened. I do have to give him a little bit of sympathy for um, because what happened? The ball came to Hydara and he uh, he went to move inside, so he pushed it from the uh, control net with his left foot to push it to his right. The issue with doing that is he saw that little, you know, that little opening when the ball was kind of like not controlled properly so he went in to get it you know I, I i i kind of applaud that to a degree i say that's a you know that's a good thing you're you're keeping your eyes concentrated on what the play is going you know what is happening and you go in and trying to make a tackle the issue is i i really don't uh i have sympathy for some for example i've seen some leg breaks where they've gone on on the floor and they've they've basically you know collided and it's caused a leg break he, they don't mean to do it and uh, they mean to go in hard for a challenge but they don't mean to break a leg or do anything do anything of that nature and um i've seen people get massive bans because of that but callum McManaman didn't get any bans and uh it is all pretty fishy the whole uh the fa thing i know the way that they try to cover it up was one of the assistants saw it but i i still think that's pretty bullshit i know they can't deviate off it i actually heard someone's view and they were like we can't we can't change it at the moment we've set these rules at the start of the season and yeah we don't want to deviate so we're going to be consistently given these sort of decisions every time we know it's wrong but we can't do nothing about it and uh that does hurt a little bit because he could he could have ended his career it was a reckless and a stupid tackle and uh martinez you know david whelan coming out you know basically of uh tainted i think wigan they've come out and made their club look pretty pathetic um and uh, has changed my opinion of them as a whole um because of the way they conducted themselves newcastle waited until they found news or they got leaked news by the news 
uh, newspapers and, uh, you know, they waited their time and did it in the right appropriate manner. Wigan aren't appropriate with the way that they came across and it wasn't like they were the victims in this, you know, uh, Newcastle were. So, you know, I have sympathy for my club. I think we, we had a lot of shit go our way and we've been incredibly, incredibly unlucky with injuries this season as a whole, let alone uh, just the incidents of that game. And uh, I don't really want to press too much on it, and uh, hopefully he won't get tons of hate. But I personally believe Callum went in there to do a tough challenge. I don't, I don't think he meant to go and break his legs or whatever. You can see if you check the video, his eyes are on the player, not the ball, and that always worries me. If you see that, you know the player's going for him. It reminded me very much of Roy Keane. Roy Keane had his eyes on the guy, uh, the guy that he ended the career off. I can't remember his name, and uh, you know that's one of the issues, I suppose. But um, that's what I don't like is. Um, you know, that guy's had his career ended, and it could have happened to Haidara as well. It might do. I still don't know any of the news uh, just yet, but I have to say is Callum McManaman is going to get some of the hate, and hopefully he will learn from it, and he will become... Um, you know, he will come better for, for it, in a sense, and he will learn from his mistakes, because there's other people that have done it. Another area of... I don't know, like hate for him, I would say, is that he showed no remorse. For example, if you remember Shawcross's incident, uh, he basically was on the floor. I, I do recall he was like moved to tears. Um, he, you know, he was very emotionally moved by um, Ramsey's uh, leg broke. And, um, you know, he showed genuine concern for the player. Callum McManaman didn't. And that really does put me in the other opinion. He has his eyes on the man. And then he just goes back and just does not do anything for the player. And I, I do believe he went in there to do a bad challenge. I don't think he meant to break him, though. And um, it, it was a pathetic tackle. The last or two last points I want to say is when you have your feet raised, when you have your foot raised like that and you're going in studs, it's a very coward tackle. And also, secondly, that you know, no one tackles like that. It's pathetic. You know, no one does a stamp. It was pretty much a stamp. That you don't win a you don't win the ball doing a stamp. You should stand your ground and block his path rather than going through the player. And uh, you know it's not the first time it's happened to Callum McManaman. He's already done it before to Guy Asseline in a Man City reserve game. He did the exact same similar challenge, and uh, the player had to go off in a knee brace because of the uh, the impact injury from Callum McManaman. So it's not the first time it's happened. Um, but then again, you know he's never going to be anything special, I suppose. So you know it won't it won't hold in too much if he was a high profile player or a very good player it could really haunt him um also as well if he was a teote or he was a suarez guess what i i, I think he would have got a massive ban but you know that's just my opinion on the situation put yours in the comments below also as well if we have got a bit of time is I really want to talk about uh, the games that happened over the weekend because um, I just did the thing about the Wigan and the tackle, but there was also a game earlier in the day uh, that was the Sunderland game. And uh, Sunderland had their luck that day. Um, I, I felt really sorry for Norwich. Nothing went their way. They should have got a penalty. I don't think the red card should have happened, but they couldn't rescind it um, because I think it hit under his arms, not his arm if you know what i mean and uh th yeah they were incredibly unlucky I, I think norwich but sunderland couldn't win and they you know norwich got away with a draw even being down to 10 men and uh poor refereeing once again and it is part and partial of this game now i mean the newcastle game is probably one of the worst refereeing decisions i've ever seen uh you know to allow that which could have ended his career and changed the game, you know, in the 15th minute or something. A red card in the 15th minute changes games, end of. Uh, we saw what happened with Real Madrid and uh, Man United. And uh, also as well, missing that last minute handball. I just don't think referees and officials are up to the job. And I do have sympathy for their position. The, the game is so quick, it's so fast. And players like Holsey, uh, people like Holsey are not going to keep up with the play. You know, uh, you know they're chasing over 20 to 30 year old athletes. Uh, and, and he's like in his mid 50s, maybe even older than that. So uh, I do have sympathy for referees uh, because of the hate they, they can get from it and things like that. But I have to say is, you know, you've got to do your job. And if you can't do your job just you know you've got to make something happen in the refereeing world i really want them to see they've got all these fourth and fifth and six officials right what they need to do is get one person look at a tv screen and relay it to the referee it's as simple as that it does not stop the game you know if someone scored a goal for example the wigan goal right they're they're off celebrating they're going on the corner it's a 90 second minute yeah guess what the referee can go 
uh you know uh, talk in his um in his mic and say you know what was that actually a proper goal you know did that guy um actually score can you have a quick check he's going to have a check of the replays he would tell it quite quick because the replays will be going on and he would say you know in a couple seconds later when he's seen it or you know 10 20 seconds later he'd go no it wasn't a goal rescind it so they can rescind the goal and they stop it even while they're celebrating because they're going to celebrate for that long and there's other incidents like that free kicks now take a while to set up the wall and things like that why not ask if that was a proper free kick you know penalty decisions you have to wait for everyone to get on the box that takes time i don't agree with stopping the game in the middle of them in the match and say look we need to get the screen like they do in uh in tennis and things like that to see if it was over the line and stuff like that but I really hope they bring this in because referees need it and I think this this can only help. It's not going to hinder it. If you have someone on the other end that can tell you information, uh, it's only going to help, I, I do believe. And uh, it's going to help these referees out who are severely struggling because it was Super Sunday, you know, what, what Sky advertised. And uh, there was two games and two of them were screwed over by refereeing decisions so there's nothing more i can really say about that that is my view on the situations put yours in the comments below a couple of game deals and uh, there's no actually football matches today by the way but the game deals is there's a humble bundle you can get bastion if you go on their links in the description as always for 69p or one dollar it's a great game so definitely go and check that out bioshock infinite you can pre-order that plus bioshock plus xcom plus as well another game of your choice out of a couple others like spec ops and darkness all on pc obviously and you can unlock it on steam uh, this is on green man gaming for 23 quid and uh, Bioshock looks such a good little game. Uh, XCOM looks really good as well. And you can have Bioshock and another game as well. Um, so you're getting basically a bundle of four games. I think that's really good for the price for 23 quid. So I definitely recommend that if you are looking to get that game on PC. Also as well, just to really wrap it off, I have been kind of inactive on this channel. This channel is only ever going to be FIFA. That's all it's going to be on this channel. I do not want to saturate it with other games. But what I've done is I've created a second channel and it's a Let's Play play and a playthrough channel so if you do like let's plays and you want to see me playing other games and things like that do go and follow that the links in the description uh, below and i'll probably make something on the screen to you know for you to be able to click it and to go there um i don't employ if you just love fifa just stay with this channel because i'm still going to be doing uh, content for it but if you do want to watch some let's plays do go and follow it okay so that will be much appreciated if you can do that and we are getting to the end of this game i do believe uh quite a convincing game as well and i do love this team i haven't sent too much on it but it's a really basic 4-1-2-1-2 but it's so good lavetsi um you know abamyang and remy you know the pace and uh the pace and the power you get off those players is absolutely incredible so that will wrap this up this is the weekly ramble hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully you can get some luck in packs do tell me who the players that you want to get out of packs and tell me in the comments below anything that you want to discuss from the topics that i've talked uh talked about as well and uh, yeah i will see you guys in the next video i'll be probably doing another one of these next week and i will see you then lads peace